So yours was your quiz. And um, so what you guys did was you had what were your mid what were your midpoints? Uh, did you did you do the fifteen or did you do the seventeen? Fifteen, I guess. Seventeen. Seven, thirty-two, thirty-seven, forty-two, forty-seven. Okay. And then, do you guys do regular frequencies or did you guys do regular? Um, and what's the highest you guys went to? I got up to eight. Okay. Six actual. All right. Um, and it was uh, four, seven, four than seven. Yes. So four, seven, five, five, three. Zero, zero, one. And then and then you anchored it with twelve here and fifty-two there. Yeah. And then you guys had something that looks sort of like that, more or less. Okay. And then you also labeled it. So you labeled it um, was it ages? Yes. And then frequencies. So you guys should be well equipped to do this in your homework. Um, please note your homework's weird. It'll say, not weird, but they're picky. So if it says like seven to seven to ten, then and you grab that, that little stick to put it in the place, place it in the graph, you have to have that stick go between seven and ten. You can't put that in the ten to thirteen spot, or else it will even though your graph will look right, it'll be totally wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of goes like it goes this one, then that one, this one, then that one. So don't go down and grab them and put them in that way. That's, it'll just mark it all wrong and you won't know why. Okay. Um, Ogives. Ogives, I think you have two homework problems on those. Yeah. Um, the rest of them, I think you only have one on, the rest of, on each of the rest of them. Um, this one uses the upper class boundaries and the cumulative frequencies. Either the cumulative or cumulative relative frequencies. Um, but they're, they're cumulative. And we're going to talk about why. That is. But first, I need to ask you a question, which is um, the reason why we do this is we often want to know how many are in a sample are in that class, or in have or are, are are kind of at or below a certain number, kind of below a certain number. So here, how many runners ran less than eight miles? Mm -hmm. Less than eight miles. Can you tell for sure? Are you certain it's one? So this group, okay, so what are my boundaries for this, by the way? I am, these are my boundaries. What are my, um, what's my class limits for this? Yeah, so six to ten. Um, so here's the issue. Eight or less, eight miles or less, they may have run six miles. They might have run ten miles. I don't know. So it might be zero. It might be one. You can't tell. Um, incidentally, someone else asked me a question and said, well, how can it be? What happens if you run exactly ten and a half miles? Which is a great question. Here is a piece of paper. What is the probability this paper is exactly 11 inches wide? Zero. It's going to be a hundredth of an inch less, or two millionth of, two millionths of an inch longer. It's not going to be exactly 11 inches. It might be so close that we can't measure it with any measurable instrument that we know, but it won't be exactly 11. It'll be the tiniest, tiniest bit more or less than 11 inches. So you guys understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so the probability of it, of, for continuous data, the probability of being at any one exact point, the probability of that is zero. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, if it's 
fractionally more, it goes this way. If it's fractionally less, it goes that way. Um, so that's, that's what that came up with. Um, incidentally, miles, is that continuous data or discrete data? So it's quantitative. So quantitative, remember there's qualitative data, which is labels, quantitative data, which is numbers. So within the quantitative, is it discrete or continuous? Why don't you chat ch ch with your neighbors and figure out what's the difference between discrete and continuous, and which one miles is in general? You will have to turn around, I guess, and talk to your neighbors. Uh, or you can go back across over there and talk to the <laughs> Maybe, Maybe you're in the break. <laughs> Um, what's your name? Um, so, um, what did I ask you guys? Is it continuous or discrete? What's the difference between continuous and discrete? Continuous is things that you measure. Discrete is things that you count. So miles in general, miles that you run, are those, generally speaking, are those continuous or discrete? Continuous. continuous. However, these are rounded. My data is in whole numbers. Does everyone see that? So my data is in whole numbers, which means they've taken continuous data and they've rounded it off. They've discretized it, discretized it, and made it into... Um, into whole numbers, um, which is discrete, yeah. So, let's say let's pop on the test, and you ask that question. Then you could say, because you've rounded it, you've made it discrete. Okay. Totally fine with what that. If you say continuous? If you said continuous, then you're all good. Because I'm going with the, generally speaking, this concept of things. Now, money is the other flip around, though. Because money, I would say, is discrete. Now, you, there is one guy from that class who makes this argument that in the world, general world of money out there in the world, you can have fractions of pennies out there. Mm -hmm. Like in my pocket, I can't. So I'm going with in my pocket money. And he, you know, so. But they round a lot. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, money is like money that you spend is to the nearest penny. You can't. I'm not going to give somebody half a penny. Okay. So. Um, all right. Good deal. So. Where am I? I am talking about, oh right. So we're good with this, and we're gonna jump to the next one. So my question is, can I say that someone ran, how many people run less than 10.5 miles? How many run less than 10.5 miles? One. One, I know that, right, for sure. How about less than 15.5 miles? Three. Three. How Because that group and that group, right? That's our cumulative frequency. One, three, six. Add those up, 11. How many are 30.5 or less? 15. 30 35.5 or less? 18. And 40.5 or less? 20. So that's why we use our upper boundaries, because we know it's less than this amount, that many people. So that's why OJOBs use the upper boundaries, because that's the, you know, it's less than this amount, and the cumulative frequency, because it's that many, 15 ran 30.5 or less. Good? So you'll have two problems to do on that. I think one where we actually feed you the cumulative frequencies and then where we have to calculate the frequency, cumulative frequencies on your own. But just remember you have to use the upper boundaries for that. Um, if you're asking, they are anchored on the lower end. So if you look at them, they're anchored on the, on the lower end. The upper end doesn't matter because the upper end would just stay at that, at that spot over and over and over again. How many runners ran 1 million miles or less? All of them, the, the whole 100%. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So once you get to, the, to everybody, 
it just stays at that point and, and continues on that. How many ran, how, what percent of them ran 40.5 or less? 100%. How many of them ran 50 miles or less? 100%. How many of them ran 2,000 miles or less? 100% of them, all of them. So once you get to 100% with an ogive, because it's that much or less, then it, it just it, it stays like that forever. Good? Not good? Okay. Alright. But yeah, you do want to tack it down um, in the front with a... Um, so you do want to anchor it here. Because how many ran 5.5 or less? None of them. Right. Right. They all ran at least 5.5 miles, so none of them ran 5.5 or less. Um, you'll have a scatterplot question. We went through this last class. You guys remember this or not remember this? Should I go over it again? Okay, I'll go over it again. Um, so scatterplot just takes one person. Um, and each dot represents a person, right? Or is, you know somebody who you ask, and this is their. It, it, it um, compares two values, an x value and a y value, two things about them. So two variables about them. In this case, it, it looks at their waist circumference and their arm circumference. So this person has a waist circumference of maybe 81, 82, and a arm circumference of like maybe 28, 29, something like that, 27, somewhere in that range. So. You, you know two variables about somebody and you, you graph them. Bar graphs. Um, these are all in your notes. Right? So you should be filling these blanks in. Use vertical or horizontal bars whose heights or lengths represent the frequencies of the data. So um, this is an example of a bar graph that goes sideways, horizontally. Um, and you can do that if it's um, if you're using categorical data. And you can also have them go up and down. There's multiple bar graphs where you have um, you compare data side by side for two or more groups next to each other. So you kind of get a better better sense of how they compare to one another. And then there's Pareto charts. Pareto charts. Pareto charts are um, therefore qualitative data, qualitative with an L, which is your labels, your categories, um, categorical variables, um, and you arrange them because categories you can arrange any way you like. Numerical, it has to go zero comes before one, comes before two, comes before three. But categories, you can move them around as you like. So here, um, I've got auto, bus, trolley. I can shift them anywhere I want. I can have trolley first or auto last or whatever. So here we've arranged them from most frequent to least frequent. Right? Highest frequency to lowest frequency. That's your Pareto chart. Um, you will need to know that for the, for the um, project. So again, Pareto charts, they organize data from what to what? Highest to lowest. Highest frequency to lowest frequency. Pie graphs, we talked about that last class also, where the whole pie represents 100% of your population of your group. Um, and then the percentage that each of the pie that each group takes up is the percentage of the whole that they are. And the way we do that is we split it up into degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle. So to figure out how many degrees are in each pi part, then, um, then you take the percent that's in there, the relative frequency, as a decimal, and multiply that by 360 to tell you how many degrees are in there. So marriage is 50%. As a decimal, 50%. You write like 50 cents. 50 cents is 0.50 times 360, um, 360 degrees, and that's 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is the um, are the is the arc in here. 
Um, you guys know like 360s, right? 360s is when some, someone has a full turn. A 180 is when they're going this direction and they make a total turn around, they go the opposite direction, right? So that's, that's half a circle. They're kind of changing. Um, so that's where those things come from. All right, so what I need you guys to do is lab problem six, make a pie chart for the following Pareto chart. So first, just for now, we're going to do the pie chart on our computers, actually. That'll make it easier and be kind of fun. Um, but for now, let's just figure out the degrees that would go in each of these, cat for if, that each of these categories would take up. So um, let's just arbitrarily assign percentages to each of these. So porosity, how many percent do you think that might be about? Uh, 15? I'll go 15, sure. How about the well LOF? Uh, I think it's a little less than that. Can you guys go a little bit lower than 10? Seven. Eight. All right, seven or eight. Seven or eight is fine. Whichever one you want to do. I'll do eight. It's just easier. Um, how about um, the next one? What do you guys want to use? Five? Five. Sure. Five's good. Um, the next one? Three percent. Three percent. Great. And the last one? One percent. Sounds good. So then we add those up. Twenty, thirty-two, and we get sixty-eight up here. <laughs> um, great. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, shrink. That's the first one. And that's going to be something times something equals some sort of number of degrees. Right? You got to figure out what times what equals what. Um, did everybody write these numbers down? 68, 15, 8, 5, 3, and 1. Write them down. I'll give you 15 seconds to write them down before I go to the previous page. Read them out again. 68, 15, 8, 5, 3, and 1. And this you guys might need in order to help you figure out how to find those degrees for each one. So I'll give you guys uh, a couple minutes. Um, tell you what, just do it. Whenever you're done, find just find the degrees for each one. Whenever you're done with that, take a break until. Uh, 840, 845, 844, 845.